This episode is brought to you by Newman Center for the Performing Arts. Friday, April 12th, see Brooklyn-based dance ensemble Urban Bushwomen's groundbreaking work, Legacy, Lineage, and Liberation. Centering women and members of the African diaspora, Legacy, Lineage, and Liberation is an evening of dance that transcends genre, illuminates overlooked perspectives, and contributes to our national conversation around equity and justice. Get your tickets now at newmancenterpresents.com. That's newmancenterpresents.com. Today on CityCast Denver. The Mile High City is known for craft beer, but now breweries are closing left and right. So I invited my stand-up comic friend who works in breweries to join us this week to give us the inside scoop. Plus, wage theft. The city is cracking down and even lawmakers working on the problem are in the crossfire. Oh, and just a warning, this episode contains some explicit language. Today is Friday, April 5th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Welcome back to CityCast Denver, the show about the city celebrating its favorite baseball-themed holiday opening day, but you'll probably still find a guy celebrating who's also wearing a sell the team shirt. <laughs> That's what I think is the nice juxtaposition with our Rockies fans. I don't know. Are you guys Rockies fans? As much as you can be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Get up on it. As much as you can be. Yeah. Cheap beer, you know, it's a nice day out downtown. Uh, I like hot dogs. Yeah. This is the thing I hear from everyone is like, do you like the Rockies? The stadium is amazing. I, I like the it. rock pile. <laughs> <laughs> Are they still a dollar? I doubt they're still a dollar. No, the tickets? Yeah. Oh, no, they're probably up in the Five. Teen, teens to 20s, right? Okay, but still. It's 2024 now. That's it's true. A, it's a deal. It's a deal. Well, it's opening day. It's also Friday. We're here at the 5280 Magazine Studios. Before we get started, I have a little bit of business to take care of. Um, we have Mayor Mike Johnston coming on the show later this month again, and we need your help. Oh, my goodness. I know. We, I mean, if you guys have questions for him, I let do. me know. Um, but we want to hear from our listeners. What do you want to ask him about? Do you have a question about his work on homelessness or the budget cuts conversation or maybe his favorite patio for margaritas? I mean, we've already asked him about his jacket, so there's many things we could ask him about. But we want to hear from you. Um, the mayoral hot seat hotline is back open. Give us a call, leave us a voicemail, or send us a text to 720-500-5418. And um, I have a minor correction from last week. We were talking about the lawsuit between uh, Alma Fondafina and My Neighbor Felix. And my neighbor, I said that My Neighbor Felix was in the old trail dust uh, building, which I don't think would mean anything to either of you. <laughs> it's an old restaurant that was on I-25. And um, listener Lynn S. wrote in to correct me. That's actually one of Francois's other spots. The View House is currently in that space. I think my neighbor Felix was in Landry's Seafood House. So thank you. We always love uh, we lo always love to hear from our listeners. Um, we've got two great guests today. As always, we have one of our favorites, stand-up comic, our man that is on the inside of Casa Bonita, Joshua Emerson. Hello. Hi. Good morning, Bree. How are you doing today? Good morning. So good to see you. It's been a while. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I woke up in a good mood. I had a yellow Red Bull. I walked <laughs> my dog, even though she was being very sassy, and uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> and a friend of a mutual friend of ours here, he's a bartender, stand-up comic who hosts a regular weekly Wednesday show at Ratio Beer Works. Corey Healy, welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to be here. I love this. Two comedians. I'm a little uh -oh. nervous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I'll be here as a I'll be here as a bartender. <laughs> I will not be funny. Please represent I promise. the bartending I will community. not be humorous. Excellent. This whole time I'm here. <laughs> what a fan. <laughs> uh, well, let's get to our top story. It's all about wage theft. There were actually multiple stories about wage theft this week. Um, this story starts at the State House, where Longmont Democrat Sonia Jack has. Lewis was booted from a powerful committee chair and bumped off a wage theft bill because, no joke, she allegedly committed wage theft. No. Oh. <laughs> it sounds like she's an expert. I don't understand why they kicked her off. That's lived experience. That's Does that count right. as lived makes experience? Sense. Who watches the watchers? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, and she's not alone. The Denver Auditor reported this week that his staff collected more than $2 million on behalf of workers in wage theft disputes just this year, which is a huge jump, nearly double from the previous year. Joshua, have you ever had your 
your way? Have you ever dealt with this issue? Yeah, just with myself, you know what I mean? And not following up on invoices for like <laughs> independent work. Yeah, that, I've, that adds I've, up. I've stolen from myself all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of, I, I would, I've never had an employer, thankfully, knock on wood somewhere, uh, not like withhold wages from me. And yeah. I can, I would be incredibly angry just because it's, it's emotional. Like the, people that this affects the most are, are like because your rent is still due your groceries your are, right are still need to be paid and so you need the money and it's uh uh in economics they yeah you need the money now not later you know right. what i mean that right. time value Corey, we're going to talk more about your experience in the service industry in a few minutes but have you ever had this happen to you um not exactly that I remember it. Pro if it if it did, it probably slipped right past me. I've been overpaid a couple of times. You know, that's <laughs> that's where you're like questioning. It's like, is this a trick? Did they mean to slip forty in tips on me, which happened like two weeks ago? I was like, the owners are testing me. I'm the manager of this bar. They're seeing if I'm on their team or on my team. And how'd you do? I put it back. I gave it oh, back to him. I asked him because you're a like, good person. I'm I'm also uh, totally paranoid and thought they were thought they were coming for me. I was terrified. I know. I was like, I have that Catholic guilt thing, so oh, I, yeah. I feel you. Catholic guilt for sure. It's, like that's 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 it, the truth behind it all. It's Catholic it just, guilt. It that's... never leaves you. It never leaves <laughs> you. Um, yeah, I, I, Joshua, I think your point is is really well made, though. That that we know who this affects the most. It's not salaried employees. Mm -hmm. It's you know who I'm one of those people now, but I have been in this position of being an hourly wage worker, and it's like a domino effect. Right. It you know you're. You don't get paid and then you like you said you can't pay your rent you can't buy groceries maybe you have bills that are due at very specific times and then that triggers late fees and it just feels like a very stressful experience and um i don't also to find a legislator in this position oh the hypocrisy is crazy right that felt like you were chosen to lead by your community uh -huh. and then this kind of it just rubbed me the wrong way and it was horrifying just reading the story um and, and multiple people have uh left her office and that, that that's maybe sucks. we know, you know a little bit more into why yeah well, I, I don't know the one or the the individual i don't think they named who it was but the staffer that they that they stiffed that that pay period left that pay period too mm -hmm. right so it yes. was just like a there, there must have been some more. It felt like she was kind of like, they already quit, so I don't care. <laughs> What's this $88 matter to them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, the, the senator that ended up signing off yeah. on the pay card was like, uh, he did it because the other senator refused to pay. And he used that word, you know. It was and in, so, I think it was in an email or something. It was just very, and he was like, an I was. intentional word. Right? Yeah, he was like, I was mm -hmm. literally just trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, what was interesting was uh, this legislator from Longmont won with 68% of the votes last election. So wow. I wonder, do you guys think that that, would that impact you as a voter, would, would this be an issue that you would you would make you think twice about that person? I, I, absolutely. Um, it's it's not great to be put into a position where you can positively affect, especially on the committee and and being a, a, a signer for this bill and then to be taken out of that role, you know. And so uh, I guess it really matters what uh, Senator uh, Lewis is going to do going forward through the through the next election cycle. Um, can she get any good work done after this happening? Yeah, because you can't really fix that they thing. That dug a done. hole. Yeah, yeah, she has dug a hole though. I don't the think. Yeah, dug. I don't think I would want to vote. I wouldn't want to vote for someone I think is dishonest. But like, it's kind of tough weeding through who's dishonest <laughs> in these in, these days or in it's these true. instances. But man, I, I I do know how I would campaign against her if I was like her <laughs> opponent. <laughs> Like blue collar people like stand up and people who no collar people like stand up because this is another person that's, you know, yeah. showing their, They're their showing disloyalty their... to their people. And the true colors kind of. And I, I think that what you just said about like sort of blue collar workers really taps back into this. Um, this thing with the auditor here in Denver, Tim O'Brien, said his office has investigated thousands of cases and they were successful because they proactively dug into the problem into the problem in indus specific industries like nail salons, construction, mm. home health care services. What does that say to you guys about this issue? I thought it was interesting to think about those specific industries. People who are minorities do those jobs yeah. I think yeah. more than folks who are uh, white. Yeah, and people that may have precarious legal status. Yep, yep. 
Also, how large the problem was really surprised me. Um, so 3,570 cases this past year. That's up from 2,061 the, the previous year. Uh, $2.4 million uh, given back to people from stolen wages. And and granted, part of that is um, from the... Uh, uh, they're allowed to charge interest on unpaid wages now. And so- Oh, oh that's neat too, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, but more money's going back to the people because of that. Um, but still $2 million, that's crazy. That is crazy, but I bet in the world, if we look at like just how many checks have gone through this year in all these kinds of industries, it's gotta be in the billions of dollars. Right. It, it felt a little small to me. Oh, really? Yeah, it did feel a little it bit It just small, felt like a but... couple of bucks we all get. Yeah. Now we're all just going to get a check for like three dollars. Obviously, that's not the truth. But, but like, yeah, it's just I mean, such a small amount for how many people live of, here. Yeah. And thousands of people right. were in this process that they were helping. Um, and I, I think the other thing interesting, too, here is like this auditor has sort of stood out. He's mm. really been vocal. Um, he. He, there was been there's been an increase in legislation around the powers that that right. the auditor can have, but this auditor in particular has been very, um, I don't want to just say like in the press, but trying to do or doing things that are getting more attention. And I think this is something that's I don't know valuable. How many how many hourly wage workers are there out out there in Denver and across Colorado? hundreds of uh, thousands right and they've earned this you yeah. know like these these are a wages that they've done the work for contributed to our economy can uh, provided a service uh so and they deserve those wages uh yeah he's he's looking to to get subpoena power i think he's one of the only elected officials without subpoena power um and so that and they're being very careful it seems like with what what subpoena power i was trying to read a little bit i was getting a little bit confused in the weeds about it but i'm definitely going to be watching to see how the legislation goes over this next year with that yeah i would wonder why would they why so city council i think would have to approve that why would they maybe not want to i i was mm -hmm. trying to think about that too yeah i, I don't i don't know transparency is important in government right? and that's kind of what his job is and at, as a constituent i like that idea but i don't know what that means on the the power, more powerful side of things, mm -hmm. should be interesting. Well, if you're a listener and you've had this experience, if you've you've had to deal with wage theft, we want to hear from you. You can um, give us a call on the wage theft hotline, 720-500-5418. Again, call or text. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more news. This episode is brought to you by the Colorado Wine Board. Because the wine community here is like surprisingly robust. I mean, think about Bigsby's Folly and Infinite Monkey Theorem here in Denver alone. And there are urban wineries all across the Front Range. Then there's the Western Slope, Peonia, I mean, Palisade, hello, Palisade Wine, are you kidding me? It didn't used to really be a thing, but from what I hear, it's very much a thing now. There are more than 165 wineries across Colorado to explore, and they produce all sorts of wine that reflect our unique culture and climate. So finding a label that you're going to love is easy, no matter where your adventure takes you. Discover it for yourself and support local winemakers at coloradowine.com. That's coloradowine.com. This episode is brought to you by ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you know how much work it takes to produce something great while dealing with complicated shipping issues. That's why over 130,000 companies have turned to ShipStation, an innovative tool that allows you to focus less on shipping and more on building your brand. With ShipStation, you can manage orders, label printing, reporting, and customer service on one easy-to-use dashboard. You'll reduce warehouse costs with reliable enterprise solutions and save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off. Plus, you can effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online. So, turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code POD to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code POD. Okay, and we're back. The question of Denverites and their love affair with beer... Uh, mm -hmm. Is it over? Because at least 31 breweries across Colorado have closed in the last year, according to Nine News. And in the last two weeks, two more breweries in Denver closed. Alpine Dog on 17th Avenue in the old Denver Bicycle Cafe and Grandma's House on South Broadway. Corey, this is your industry. What are you hearing? Um, 
just basically maybe some people aren't drinking as much beer and some people have maybe property issues where rent is kind of what's what's struggling and it's hard to pay those bills when when you have a tough landlords might be the case for grandma's house but i do think there might be like you know a shift in in the way people are drinking alcohol a little bit so as much beer as you know we all might want to consume the people that we like spend time with maybe don't want to drink a lot of beer and there's room for other uh other ways to do it you know uh, seltzers or seltzers uh, yeah have had a huge rise in popularity huge. i'm sure that's had an impact on beer yep and, and craft beer is making seltzer so they're trying oh, yeah. to pivot along with it which is it's easy to make seltzer we could we could do it now <laughs> yeah and i have to say as a person that doesn't drink and and quit drinking even before sort of this latest brewery boom I had, early on, I remember going to a couple of breweries and they had no options. I would say ratio has a ton. It's mm. one of the reasons I love it, but there were just limited options. So even trying to meet those friends when you want to have a beer and they don't might be deterring people from mm -hmm. going. Um, Paul wants to know if you sell hop water at ratio. What is hop water? Hop water. So uh, hop water. Uh, so I don't, I don't work at ratio. I, I do oh, host a comedy right. show there. I have worked at ratio. They do sell a hop water. It's uh, it's I I think the one they have right now is has a peach flavor to it. It's great. It's is really it good. like a well, seltzer? What is it? I guess. So it's it's kind of like if hop, if there was a hop Lacroix, Lacroix, or a Waterloo, so soda water that's flavored with hops. I work okay. at Landlocked oh. Ales on South Wadsworth, a tiny little Lakewood brewery. We make hop water with terpenes instead of hops, so we're like lying to the people, which I don't think <laughs> we're gonna get in trouble for. It. But we don't what? use hops because hops are expensive. Oh. So we use terpenes, which is the non-psychoactive ingredients from, from weed, from marijuana. Uh, That's and what I thought. Some guy sells us that. We pour it into soda water, and it just kind of tastes like hops. I meant to bring some today, but it was yeah. just short enough notice. I didn't. Is it non-alcoholic? Non-alcoholic, It, it yeah. is. Mm -hmm. So it's like sort of a beer alternative for someone who maybe wants something with a little bit of that Hot flavor. flavor. So is mm -hmm. it all flavor? Do you get any buzz at all? Or oh, nothing. Is it no, no, no nothing psychoactive. It, like Just kind of tastes like. Interesting. Uh, just kind of tastes like gym socks. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the, everyone I've had is good. And uh, I, I once, you know, before COVID, I was working in Nebraska at a brewery and some 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 dork uh, brought like a vial of hop juice and squirted it into carbonated water that we happened to have at the brewery. And as a bartender, I was a little, I was a little torqued i was like, You're like what, Sir, are you, what is what are you in doing there? here like why are you even in my it's weirdly offensive you know? <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna tip you gonna, for my you... carbonated water <laughs> are you gonna um, roofie someone what's oh, really yeah, in there just, just himself <laughs> just, just making a potion <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, interesting i mean i think this is also tapping into though and i wonder if maybe breweries haven't done as good of a job as they could is there are still people that want to drink beer that's not alcoholic i'm not one of those people but I, my brother loves non-alcoholic beer. Is that a thing? I mean, how I got, is that playing out in the brewery scene? I uh, I, I stopped drinking for a, a while, uh, no reason, just to see if a toe would stop hurting. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we'll save that story for another. You know, we'll talk about my toe in the future. Can't wait. <laughs> um, it, it stopped. Uh, <laughs> Thank God. But non-alcoholic beer, yeah, it, it just it just didn't really like uh, hit for me. It doesn't really taste the same, and it's it's. You know, just not, it's not quite the same, but if, 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 if you're not quitting, you know. Depends on what your reasons yeah. may be. My, I, I just was bored one day and, you know, a sales rep dropped on non-alcoholic beer hat off at my brewery and I started wearing it and I was like, I'm going to just not drink for what turned into like five or six months. And uh -huh. it was just because a guy gave me a hat. And but not drink, but drinking that beer was terrible. <laughs> we stopped selling it eventually, but it was a great hat, and it inspired me not to drink. But then I was I was you know testing non alcoholic beers where I would go, and I work in breweries. I call bingo at breweries. Also, <laughs> comedy's not paying. If you need bingo work, Josh. Oh man, the bingo. If you want to call bingo? I can get you some money Bingo's for calling bingo at a grocery stores where it's I'm a vein. now. I know it's a vein. You know what I mean? You just haven't <laughs> stepped into it. Yet. It's, yeah, it's there. I, I, spelling bees is where I want to go. That's so, my my next move. That's a great right. idea. Okay, that's a great <laughs> idea. Um, but I was drinking non-alcoholic beers, and it, it's it's not it's just not the same. And it's not because I was trying to catch a buzz, because like you know, I'm probably smoking weed before I drink those beers. So I was I was I was feeling you know <laughs> goofy, but it yeah. just doesn't it doesn't exactly taste the same. Yeah. In fact, sometimes it's like kind of repulsive. It's just not not good at all. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, uh, part of brewery culture for me is the, like the vibe the the sense of like comfort i feel in a brewery mm -hmm. it's like like 
like Colorado versions of a pub. You know what I mean? Okay. A little bit different because like you, you just know, made it sound beautiful, kind of well, and, and I, historic. I love I love breweries. One, I, I mean, I'm a comedian, and breweries are so supportive of comedy. I'd mm-hmm. say right. in terms of industries that support comedy, I think breweries would probably be the biggest. If you're a new comedian and you just want to run a show, uh-huh. just learn yeah. a brewery. No one's put a stake in yet, and they'll let you do it. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Which is why I love Grandma's House. Um, they they had a weekly Saturday show that that ran for years of that was, and i have good. to say yeah at first i was surprised because uh, they do so many interesting events too i mean they literally do crafting nights mm-hmm. and all these kinds of things but it sounds like it was a pretty gnarly situation with their landlord right which was wild to me too because there's plenty of vacant retail space across the city i can't imagine they're dying to fill that space with someone else it was the best thing about that neighborhood in yeah. my opinion um it was a great it was the hangout. best reason to go down to south south broadway um yeah. and so uh, and a lot of my friends had a lot of fun, like doing those events, like playing board games. Um, and it's so kitsch too. And it's, so Grandma's House, I think, is a really interesting example had a vibe. of how you can make a brewery that isn't going to fail um, because they had they knew they knew how to make the, something special on top of being a brewery. And they had the landlord issue, which is sort of why they have to sort of go away. But I mean, that's what breweries, I think, are going to have to do going forward. It's now the market is there's still a big demand for breweries, it seems like. But you have to find a way to make your brewery stand out. It seems like I agree. And they yeah, they stood out well. I was there on their opening night and I was just like, this place is so cool. And like like just Nintendo, crocheted blankets, uh, glasses that, you know, like 1980s Arby's glasses with Looney Tunes on them. Just Very weird stuff like that. Very nostalgia driven. Very cool. Feeling. Uh, the owner though, I think like this is probably the biggest problem is like the owner though, like this is probably breaking news, isn't, oh. a, isn't a grandma. <laughs> what? It's just a dude. <laughs> Are you serious? Josh, Josh, you say you've been there every Saturday for years. You had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. No grandma in no sight grandma. ever? No, no, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I am shocked. They had that great grandma blow up yard, uh, you know, like a Christmas tree from that like, would blow up in your yard. They had a grandma like forever on the roof. It was so funny. And uh, I don't. it may have been a, a landlord issue, but the neighborhood issue, but they kept getting complaints to where they had to take the grandma <laughs> floaty off of the roof on South Broadway. And Why? I do, I, I don't know, that I think it was a distraction awesome. or it looked like it was going to fly off or something. Uh, I, I have no idea, but I do, I do like that neighbor. I like South Broadway and leading up to like that Inglewood uh, yeah. like area like is cool. And I feel like 10 years ago when they opened, it was, it was it almost predicted it could be walkable in 10 years, but yeah. in that uh-huh. 10 years, it has not become walkable. And maybe that's part of this real estate issue, right? Is they were mm-hmm. in there at the beginning when it was more affordable. Now this landlord is seeing opportunities that were created by places like grandma's house being destinations. We see this all over. I mean, this is the right. story of an American city, but like now they can't afford the neighborhood that they helped to create, create. that walkability, the the draw, the, the comedy draw, the hangout draw, just the things that that neighborhood was clearly at wanting and asking for. I hope that they reappear somewhere else. It doesn't sound like that's the plan, but uh, it seems like they had a devoted audience and following as well as people in the performing world that liked to be there, mm-hmm. which says a lot about your establishment. You can be a venue and people still don't want to hang oh, out yeah. there or work for you. Right. So, And they've, they've kind of had a rough year because I think they were part of the- Trinidad. Like, yeah, that Trinidad exodus. Yeah. And oh. they, uh, they were like a joint- Place That's with like sexy right. pizza at the time. And then I think maybe it's just a, a sexy pizza. I don't know if they're still involved. I can't remember. If, are they still? Okay. Yeah, there's been, but I know that, that that's that been a conversation over the last like years. Like did Trinidad quote work? You know, are we, are we sticking it out or not? So, uh, what a bummer. It's, I guess my last, well, one more thing I want to ask you guys is this is a trend and it's been going on for a long time. Are we just like seeing the tail end of an oversaturation or? I was thinking about it in terms of like that seltzer talk and like, I don't think seltzer is ruining craft beer or anything because we can, we're all making seltzers. And again, it's easy to make some, some uh, extract water carbonation. You got, you got a seltzer. It's nuts. Um, But like hard, hard seltzer. uh, How old are you, Josh? (laughs) <laughs> I'm 32. 83. Um, <laughs> if, 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 you know, our generation and the one above it, you know, some, some of the 50 ish year old dudes I was hanging out with, you know, 12 years ago, getting me into craft beer. If our generations enjoyed craft beer together, you know, and that kind of built that scene up. And now yours and I's generation are agreeing with the one below us who enjoy seltzers. 
it's almost like just tastes are maybe shifting a little bit. So there's still maybe a place for craft beer that will be there in the future. Maybe it'll be a lot less craft breweries, but I mean, uh, hopefully there's still <laughs> An evolution plenty. is in, in process, and sometimes that means losing mm -hmm. a lot before we gain the next And round. as a beer tender, I, I love pouring beer. Uh, <laughs> I manage my brewery, but pouring beer is so easy. I've been a, a barista and a bartender <laughs> for a couple of hours once or twice. And I hate mixing drinks and warming up uh, mm. milks and pouring stuff into things, but beer is one thing. I can pour two at a time. You can pour, yeah. you can talk to people. It's so easy, it's so easy. <laughs> but if if it changes to where I have to start making beer. You have to start wearing suspenders. Or yeah, and... yeah, uh, shaving my beard and just having a cool mustache. I, I'm gonna hate that. But I see that breweries are probably either, I think our relationship with um, food trucks is great. And if you don't have that, you're probably going to have to start a kitchen to get people to come to your place. And you're probably going to have to start and maybe selling some mixed drinks. And permitting yeah, things and might just have to change a little bit and become more of a uh, tavern or like a uh, uh, like a pub than just a tap house. There might have to be some food served or some some whiskey and, and waters or whatever kids are drinking. Yeah. Another example of that Vine Street. Uh, pub and breweries are reopening over there by city park and you thank know, that, god i love that yeah oh. and people are very excited some of the best things in denver you know well, I can't, I've never I, was, been. I was telling josh that kevin o'brien used to do our mutual friend used to do that great show arguments and grievances there yeah that was one of the you greatest comedy it. shows ever it, yeah great and it's such a cool room like you're hanging out it's again it has that living room vibe mm -hmm. like grandma's house oh, that time. makes people want to hang out there so i think that that is a good prospect josh to think about is the positive side of it but um it's you know maybe it's just a recalibration of these things before we move on i'd love to give you some space to shout out your favorite breweries uh, oh wow uh the gnome how long is this podcast everybody <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah the gnome over there by the by the o I keep grateful going to gnome? Say, the grateful gnome. Delicious. Yeah, so delicious. Yeah, and right in my neighborhood. Good sandwiches. Oh, great deli. Yeah. Oh, they're really cool. I've never been there. Yeah, Usually when I'm at the Oriental Theater, it's uh, closed because it's late. At <laughs> oh, that's night, funny. So. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so what about you, Corey? Um, I, get, I have so many. Uh, my favorite brewery I've never worked for <laughs> is <laughs> Chain Reaction. <laughs> they're uh, really cool people. They have uh pinball machines and they've they've been like part of this like cool movement in denver where they've made a controller for pinball machines that people with uh different disabilities can oh, can like wow. play with their hands oh, this cool. uh my so my cool. children play pinball with this controller at my brewery that one of the owners of chain like cooked up so that's like and their beers are beers are very unique. They use like pink peppercorn and so, like it's like someone huh. challenges them with a, an ingredient and they're like, watch. And they come from food backgrounds, which I think makes sense to, awesome. to like take to beer. Uh, I also love Gold Spot Brewing. Uh, I've never it's been. It's north of town. They're, they do they do some comedy stuff there, but I think I think it's it's more like LGBTQ based uh, comedy. Um, their beer is super great. Um, they're under like new ownership as of like a two or three years ago, but just great beer, good people. They once like, uh, when I worked for Ratio, like helped us out of a bind once, like just this huge bind we were in and they helped us find a way to like, just keep selling beer. So like, they're like angels to me. I'll stop there with this. <laughs> oh, we gotta also shout out Ratio. You know, there, some, of, yeah. some of the best okay. beer I've ever had. Yeah, Ratio and, has great beer. Yeah. And great the, music and- Yeah, I was like, the music yeah. component of it is the most appealing thing to me. Is like, this is started by folks from the punk rock world and it feels that way in a way that's like inviting, even if that's not necessarily your thing, mm -hmm. so. Like the month I started, I used to deliver beer at Ratio and like the month I started, um, the bassist of my favorite band, Alkaline Trio, played like <laughs> an acoustic Hell set, yeah. like, like they were like you're hired come back they tonight some of the and coolest shows. get like via, get like work here uh you know <laughs> backstage stuff and it was just like oh my gosh this a special special place yeah yeah well we know a lot of you out there are uh brewery fans as well as probably folks that work in the industry we'd love to hear your takes on this uh give us a call on the colorado breweries question mark hotline 720-500-5418 we're going to take a quick break and when we come back our rocky mountain highs and lows And we're back 
we've got our Rocky Mountain highs and lows of the week, our wins and fails, things that ruled, things that sucked. Uh, we're going to start with fails because we always love to end on a good note. Mm. Joshua, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I'll start us off. Uh, this is Bell Cherry Hills, um, the Denver I just posted an oh. uh, article talking about a lot of the residents having issues with wildly fluctuating utility bills and just like weird. And it really, I think, it just adds to this whole, there's a lot of fake luxury apartment complexes mm-hmm. in Denver that suck that you you go there and the rent's too expensive the neighborhood is great because they they pick the best spots in denver but the actual bones of the building was built really quick really cheap and it sucks to be a resident there yeah so this is an apartment complex it's just past old hampton um on sort of the edge of like downtown inglewood right and it's brand new. It is brand new because I remember when they were building it a couple years ago. And something that struck me in that article was um, the tenant that was like, my rent just keeps going up and right. the place just keeps getting crappier. And I, it seemed we're just hearing so much of this lately. And I wonder if this is like the next era of Denver of like some of these buildings aren't going to last. I, I hope so. The, what's happening is that the rent, they're reacting to the market of Denver as right, a whole, which right. Denver's getting a better place to live. Rent's yeah. going up. And so, uh, and it's, but it is weird just like as an individual to have the product get worse where you're living, get worse and worse and you're paying more and more. And it really just feels and unfair. And for a brand new building. Exactly. I mean, that's it's, the part that like floors me. Yeah, but rough. then I think like my, one of my first apartments in Capitol Hill was like a forties building. Mm-hmm. It had like an industrial you toilet it. in yeah. it. Right. It was an elevator with a door that has like a chain link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was like indestructible. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like it was like built it, to last. Yeah. So they survived so, a nuclear bomb. You know yeah. What I mean? to- basically. <laughs> Yeah. Even if I was on the second floor. <laughs> but, um, Corey, what have you got? Uh, fails. Um, the Nuggets uh, suspending their season ticket holder, Vicky Ray. Oh, my gosh. So annoyed about that. And I thought they would have made story. things right. It's been like a week and a half. And uh, I just figured a championship organization could just find solutions that don't end in a Booting. season ticket holder being booted out of the arena. And a season ticket holder that like wrote Christmas cards oh, yeah. for the staff and was like very seemed to have a genuine well loved by the staff too. Yeah. Like you no, know, like one of the season ticket holders that the staff all knew where they were at and yeah, it, it's uh, it stinks. They said that she had like grabbed at someone or something. Is that what it was? Like where she's sitting? Like they accused her of like touching mm-hmm. somebody or something. But I feel like another piece of that story was like maybe that's a hot season ticket spot and yeah and that's what yeah that's what kind of i i caught with it it was like it seems yeah. like maybe they just want to make get rid of this person a lot of money off of someone else that can Which do this I, but that's the charm of someone that's been there that's for your, so long exactly that's like yeah it's like that the those twin women in uh, the sisters in the cu buffs fans that are like in their 80s or something right well only one of them is alive now but like they're beloved by everyone that goes to games and to be like, uh, if they would have found a better solution, they could have had that like Dion Sanders, that lady moment where they met. And this woman could have been, uh-huh. hey, despite, you know, this trouble Perfect we PR made a week and a half, I, they should hire me as PR. <laughs> I do have a, a communications mass media degree. Denver Nuggets, please. Uh, the brewery industry is shutting down. Rocky <laughs> Sports and Entertainment. Bring me in. Give me a call. Yeah. I've never said anything bad about you. You don't own the Rockies. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think they could have found a much classier, cooler way to maybe, oh, if she's too close, maybe we can push her 15 feet away Something. or set some boundaries with her. But not just boot her forever. Have, you know, just maybe they're worried about the referees and maybe we can just be like, if you want to touch the players, do that. <laughs> but leave the referees alone so we don't get in trouble for you having a friendship with the referees. Like if that's if it's. If it's that they're worried about, maybe there's something to be said, but say it. Don't, yeah. don't I, act harshly. Very shady. I guess if it's an NBA thing, like their hands are tied. But if it's not an NBA thing, like Kroenke, you got to make it right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, my feel this week was uh, brought to you by Denver Foos, one of my favorite Instagram accounts. Oh, yeah. They posted this picture of a building on, it's an apartment building on Federal and like Dartmouth-ish. It's right across from Loretto Heights. And it is known in the community for being a building that has a brick pattern in it. It was built in like the, probably the 70s or 80s. And it looks like random bricks of different colors, but there's clearly a, a man 
with a giant penis. <laughs> <laughs> Illustrated in the brick. And and they had posted like anybody, like anybody remember this? Like, where is this? And everybody's like, it's the pee pee man building. We love the pee pee man building. And I realized the new owners painted over the pee pee man. What? Oh, R.I.P. Pee. R.I.P. Pee pee man. He was an icon. Pee pee. On that side of Denver, so just gotta find a new place to put a mural of that. So it just I needs to be across the street, <laughs> or someone could just paint it right because it's white now. So just paint the pee pee man Ooh. back right on there. <laughs> All right, we so, can arrange this. That's right. I'm not doing anything tonight. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Denver Foods for bringing it up, but I am sad that pee pee man yeah. no longer exists. Uh, okay, let's go to our wins. Um, you know what? I'll just start. I've got one really quick. Chauncey mm-hmm. Billups is being inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame. Great news. Great Park news. Hill represent. He uh, and he and I went to the same high school. Um, I went to high school. He was, I think, I think he was a senior when I was a freshman. But I, I mean, even at that point in time, it was a big deal. He was known. He was going to be huge. And this is, I don't know, this is just one of those moments for Denver where I feel very proud that we're a city. And also, especially in this moment now, the Nuggets are doing awesome. Mm-hmm. We're getting a little bit more respect. It's only proper to see someone like Chauncey inducted into the He was NBA a five points guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was Park Hill. That's and neat. then he okay. I mean it was part of we were during our school time, they were still busing. Right. So yeah. they were bringing kids in from oh, different really? neighborhoods. Uh huh. They stopped busing when I was a sophomore, I think. But um I live right by George Washington and he lived in Park Hill, but okay. that's that's how it worked. But just a big deal for us. I think Ch- congratulations, Chauncey. Oh, yeah. That's huge. NBA champion. Uh, yeah, made sure that the Lakers didn't win in 04 <laughs> and couldn't just big. buy. That's a big deal, big. I think. And Detroit basketball at that time was not, I wouldn't say it wasn't fun to watch. There's just no offense. It was all, it was more like pro wrestling than basketball. A lot of heels. Yeah, exactly. A lot of tough guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit basketball, early 2000s. And he was uh, a nugget for a moment as well. Yeah, that's so true. at least we have, we have that as well. Um, Corey, what's your win? Um, now we talked breweries despite some closing. Sometimes there's like some rebirth in that. Yeah. Sunroom Brewing in Inglewood closed. Uh, I'm currently an Aurora boy. I live like Colfax and Airport. Uh, I almost <laughs> live in Nebraska again. Everyone. You're almost home. I almost <laughs> yeah. made it back. Um, they, uh, Sunroom closed, but one of Aurora's like coolest breweries, Lady Justice Brewing, yes. uh, has left Aurora, which makes me sad. Um, looking for a new home space. Any Aurora breweries listening? I'm looking, I'm looking for a place to... <laughs> to bring me in. I'm a lost pet. Um, but Landlocked took, or excuse me, Landlocked, uh, Lady Justice took over Sunroom's brewing space, which is like bigger and wonderful. Uh, Lady Justice before, like their taproom space was like as big as like this the room, room we're in, in doubled. Like it was very small. Um, and it was on, and it was on East, East, East Colfax, like far East Colfax, which is maybe not like the ideal space for, uh, for just that that population, you sure. know, and and the patio never seemed like super safe to to sit at, especially like I'd take my kids there and have a drink, let them like pick a six pack and we'd leave. And it was like, well, probably stay away from, from the patio. And now they're in just maybe a space that kind of suits suits them a little bit better. And sometimes when one brewery closes, another Something one can just pop in. Cool. And that's a there. that's nice. They can make more beer. They can. That's right. Great. It's already outfitted for them. It's That's awesome. perfect. Oh, congratulations. And they're, they're Lady opening uh, official like opening this weekend. So they've had like a soft week. Cool. And then Saturday, Sunday, like uh, shenanigans. Awesome. Fun. So go check out Lady Justice. I love it. Joshua, close this out. All right. I uh, This is embarrassing. Uh, this is a vulnerable moment for me, guys. <laughs> I love this show. Love is blind. It's <laughs> it's terrible. I, it, I understand. It horrible. It's a terrible premise, uh, but also the best premise in the world. If you don't know what it is, it's these really hot people from all over the country come and they have gone these uh, pods where they can't see each other and they try to develop a relationship over personality and just talking and then it's not love on the spectrum but for blind people Uh, I I I I don't know this show and I thought it was about seeing impaired people no (laughs) No. these people have total eyesight but they're just they just can't see because they're in different rooms exactly I haven't haven't watched this one because I can't understand how it's usually Usually these shows are populated with Instagram people. They're right. hot and boring. So how do you have, do they really have personalities enough that come some through Some of here? them. Yeah, some of them are terrible people. Okay. And some of them I are- I do love watching like, terrible they, people. Uh, yeah, exactly. And some of them are great. And they, they're all, they've all sort of bought into like, well, I'm just going to see where this goes type thing. And yeah. Yeah, so they see each other for a time. I've had a couple they, of those relationships. <laughs> <laughs> 
Her dad's a judge. <laughs> I'm going to stick this one out. See how this goes. Uh, but they're filming in Denver, and it came out uh, a couple of different right. places uh, that they were filming, like Sloan's, Odell Brewing, and this made me laugh, My Neighbor Felix. Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, they would choose that. They might as well go to Happy Camper. Like, it's... <laughs> yeah. It's perfect for that, for that, 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 that type of, yeah. Shows like this need you folks as location scouts, so you can point them in the right direction. Direction of places. You're like, you know? that place yeah. sucks. Nobody really goes there. <laughs> Head Nobody to the Squire Lounge. Oh my God. I would love to see a reality show of this ilk trying yeah. to exist in Welcome the to Love on Colfax. <laughs> Stay up the Squire, then to Frontier Club, where yeah. I live. Uh, this is a pitch. I, I like love this. it. Yeah. I like this. I well, I'm. Get to writing, everybody. <laughs> I, I, that was for me, though. I so just, the win is like, that they're <laughs> filming here in Denver. Yeah. That's exciting, too. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, I guess maybe I'll tune in probably. We'll see. Well, Joshua, Corey, this has been so lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me, gang. Absolutely, yeah. uh, Corey, you were great. Bree, you were great. Me, I was great. Have a great (laughs) night, guys. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. Our producers this week were Paul Caroli, Olivia Jewell-Love, and Dylan Brogan. Peyton Garcia writes our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, and I'm Bree Davies, your host. Our music is by Los Mogotetes with additional mixing by Tyler Lindgren. If you haven't already, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, follow us on Instagram at CityCast Denver, and tell Senator Sonia Jaquez Lewis about us next time you see her. You can sign up for our daily newsletter and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. See you next week. controller and I it's love, real cool like ha- it shows you that accessibility is for everyone when mm-hmm. like it's a kids can use it yeah like, absolutely it's amazing okay i've smoked weed and used it at the same time <laughs> oh, like after hours so you know <laughs> like just like use like one thumb to hit all the others while i do a <laughs> that's not a what joint. it was made for it's not really? but if somebody had one arm though yeah they could still do it with one that's hand great, and man. i've learned that because i was abusing <laughs> Drugs at my empty brewery after hours. Yeah, if, if a one-eyed person came in, you'd you'd give it up. You know, like, no. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try. <laughs>